Are you ready, folks? Now, got the patented homeless blue beanie, patented Pendleton, and I'm laying back on the bed with the $7,000 Krasilinski. Fucking life is grand, bitches. So listen, so, um, you know, um, I got Maury Povich playing in the background to let you know this is like a ghetto report. I'm so broke down, starving, hungry, tired, man. Um, you know, I love my Xbox, man. And my wife and my son, you know, they got me a new, brand new Xbox 360 for Christmas. I'm 44 years old, so you know what I'm saying? I want to get me the football game where I can play football. Da, 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 touchdown! Relive the glory days when I was 16. That's a long way back. You feel me? So, I hooked up this thing last night. And I can't even transfer my gamer tag over, man. I am the real AIX. And I cannot be the real AIX if I start all over from the beginning. I've had the Xbox since the Xbox first came out. Everybody's like, you know what, man? The Panasonic 3DO thing did not work out for you. That Atari thing did not work out for you. When you did get a PlayStation, your house was broken in and someone stole it. It did not work out for you. One of the best games I had was that uh, was Iron Helix or what was it something like that. Had the voice of that guy from the uh, you know Grateful Dead movies. Not Grateful Dead, but you know Evil Dead movies. Bruce Campbell. He was agent, crawl around on the floor and get up, shoot stuff. As before, perfect dark. <sighs> oh, so well, where was I at? So look, so I'm trying to transfer my gamer tag over into my brand new Xbox Slim. Didn't happen. Apparently, the email address I used 400 million years ago. When I was just a fledgling gamer, first big time system I bought, I was resisting the PlayStation urge that was under my skin. Get a PlayStation. Get another PlayStation. Try. And I was like, no, I'm waiting for the new machine. So I get the Xbox. And when it broke down, I took the green center out of it. And I vowed to get a new Xbox. When I got another one, I bought a 56-inch TV, and I took that center, that emblem, and put it in the corner of that 56-inch kind of TV. High definition. My new Xbox. I was proud. But it's, it's about now. It's about me not being able to get my camera tag. And now it's too much of this crap box in the background. In other news, Raider head coach Huge Jackhammer got the hammer dropped on his ass usually and he was fired. I think Hugh Jackman should have got at least two more years to try. They let Lumpy get uh, three years in there or whatever, four years, I forget. But, you know, we've been down so long. I don't think they should have fired him. But I had a debate with an old friend of mine. They were 8-8 eight and eight last year, and they're 8-8 eight and eight now. What did Hugh Jackman change? Getting back to other news. I mean, the original story. I gotta get the dog. Mailman's coming. Game night tonight. We'll be watching the Warriors tonight. 
I'll be trying to eat. Face the Miami Heat. I just want my gamer tag. If you've ever played video games for any extended time, whenever you turn on that Xbox 360, you see every game that you've ever played on the Xbox 360 under that gamer tag. When I got my first real Xbox, the good one, you know, the, the 360, you know, when I first got the first 360, I started the real AIX gamer tag. When I first got online, I couldn't transfer the ones that were non, you know, my non-online, the real AIX. So I was pissed. I was pissed when I lost those little bit of numbers. And then I started all over. And for the last X amount of years till now, because I got the second run of the Xbox 360. You know what I mean? So when they first came out and everybody was pissed off when they didn't get it for Christmas because they like pushed them back a month or whatever, I got the second run when I was supposed to get the first one. You know, so I had Xbox that long. All of a sudden, I hear everybody who has Xbox gamer tags and all that stuff are losing their, you know, gamer tags. Because a lot of those email addresses we use to set up all that stuff 400 million years ago when Xbox 360 first came out, those email addresses and old, you know, passwords are probably gone like the dinosaur. Because for the last umpteenth few years, I never had to log into Xbox Live. I just turn on my Xbox. So just recently when I got the new Xbox, I hesitated deeply not to transfer my information from one Xbox to the other. Because for fear I would lose the ability to go on Xbox Live. Now they're asking me for passwords I don't remember. They're asking me to, you know, prove that this email address, which I used to have, is mine, which it is mine. And I have proven to a point through the people at Xbox Live that it is my email address. But I just can't be given the opportunity to reset it or put it or hook it, link it to an a, a email address that is useful now. So, what about all us old gamers? You think we want to start over? You think Slick56 wants to be Slick56 again, or the new Slick56, or, you know, Lexington Steel wants to be the new Lexington Steel? I don't know if these guys got the new Xboxes or what have you, but a lot of these people that I know, wouldn't have enough time to research to find out what old password you used. And back in the day, when people were afraid of the internet, you really didn't want to give them all the truth. So when they ask me a question about something in my past, I'm like, do you honestly think back in the days in this fledgling thing called the internet, I was going to give you the truth about who the hell I am? So now I got to figure out a password based on something that was either based in this or that. Do you understand the dilemma I have here? All this to save a few numbers? All this to give these people the opportunity to get a new credit card phone number from me? Not a credit card phone number. A credit card number from me? They won't even accept my new credit card. That's ridiculous. You took my money before, and now you won't take my money. They also ask you, what is the last four digits of the last time you used a free card. When you get these free cards to use the internet free for one month, do you write that number down or put it in a book or put it on the calendar to remember which date is the last date you used a free number? They ask me which credit card I used last to you know purchase anything on the internet. And it was my wife's card. And I asked my wife, do you still have the card? She says, that was three years ago when we bought my nephew a game when he spent the weekend. What makes you think I'd have that same card from three years ago? I'm like, I don't know. Because this way, this economy is like, you know, I don't have the same phone number. They're asking me for the phone number I had all those years ago. I don't have the same phone number. The guy says the address matches. Yes, the address matches. I live in the same place. I don't have the same phone number. I don't have the same credit card that I used, you know, four years ago. It's odd. 
I just want to save my name on Xbox 360. I want to play my new Connect. I want to do the UFC, you know, get in shape thing. I want to do the biggest loser. I want to go through Disneyland. I want to do all these things on the Connect because I don't leave my house anymore. And if you watch my show, then you know why. I'm agoraphobic. I don't leave the house. I don't leave the house. This is the most ultimate reality show that you'll ever see in the history of reality shows on the internet. Because what? I'm honest. I'm a black person that's honest. It kills people to understand or think that. Oh. So... When it comes to the racial stuff that, you know, we go through on our show, I did the uh, black situation. Uh, I did the Mexican situation. Uh, I did the uh, a white situation. And the people here behind the scenes, my closest friend says, the next target of people I should either mimic or make fun of or bring into the limelight should be the Jewish people. And we're thinking it's like, you know, because they're saying I'm I'm cheap. And, you know, when you're a frugal person, people want to say, okay, he saves money, so he's Jewish. I think that's, you know, pretty, I guess, racist to make statements like that. But, you know, since I'm cheap, they have given me a nickname amongst my friends. And it's sad because it's not just the white people who call me this. It's the black people who call me this also. And and it gives me a sense of how people talk. And, and you look, it's like it's the good old boys. If you know some people who can make certain jokes and you can sit and laugh like, oh, that's fucked up. And there's a certain group of people who can make these same jokes, but then you don't laugh like, hey, man, that's pissing me off. That's racist. Where's the thin line? So, this was the idea. They call me Alon's Jew. And, and I'm like, well, if you're calling me Jewish and every time I go somewhere I'm haggling for a price, why don't I go ahead and wear a yarmulke and go in the store and try to talk myself down on some good prices? And then a friend of mine says, well, in order for you to wear the yarmulke, of course, it's time for me to cut the hair again, which I'm trying to let it, you know, get thick for winter, you know. But then we figured the yarmulke would have to represent some, like, Jamaican-type thing, you know, so it'd have to be, like, the Rasta colors, you know. And then I'm like, what about the locks? So, you know, you guys see I don't have any locks. I was thinking about getting some dreadlocks and put two dreadlocks on each side, you know, and get the... The hat, the, the uh, yarmulke, and you know, and go haggle some prices. And the guy says locks. I'm like, yeah, use dreadlocks for the side on my sideburn. And he says, you know, um, the uh, so-called, so-called, you know, Jewish whatever people would come kill me if I did that. So we were thinking of a name I would use. It was um. Was it um, Alonzowitz, Jehoshaphat's, or something like that? It was a, it was Alonzowitz something, you know, Al Alonzowitz. You get it, Alonzowitz. You get it, Alonzowitz. You know, but um, it's better than Al Jew, but um, Alon Jew. But um, other than that, the premise that a group of people would be thrifty or cheap or because my wife calls me cheap she calls me a bum. my wife called me a bum last week i'm like what do you mean why are you gonna that's hurtful why would you call me a bum she says you are so cheap i'm like what do you mean she says you know what when's the last time you bought a pair of shoes i'm like I looked at her and she says, yeah, oh, six.
Last time I paid for a pair of shoes was in 2006. And I'm like, where have I been getting my shoes from? And I noticed my son gave me a pair of old shoes. I've been wearing my son's old shoes for like two years and old work boots and stuff. I bought a suit when I was going to court. And bought, you know, some things when my aunt died. Does that make me cheap? I don't buy brand new computer programs or brand new computers. I repair the computers I use. The last computer, the one I'm using right now, it is still, I, I paid um, $135 for this computer. And it's still under warranty. I can literally take this computer back in two months and have HP go through and fix the whole computer up and get me a new one. When I bought the computer for, you know, the guy wanted 150 for it. I gave him 130. I looked it up on the internet. It was worth 420. Refurbished. It's not touchscreen like I wanted. I'll do a lot of trading and bartering. Am I cheap? If being cheap, someone can call me Jew or something like that, because that's, that's a racist statement. They make me cheap. When I used to have a full-time job. I worked at pretty much like just say an amusement center or entertainment center. When I had big events, I also worked for a catering company that operated several uh, entities inside the facility. So I'd invite my family in and I'm like, you know, I tell my wife, hey, you want to bring your friends? Come on, let's go. So you guys get something to eat, whatever. And my wife wouldn't take, she wouldn't be like, nah. Am I cheap? Get all the kids together. Let me open the back gate. Come on in. I got tickets. That make me cheap? So when I first became a DJ, I noticed everybody was, you know, turntables and all that stuff and I like I went through that and lost a lot of records and everything I went and bought two of those you know personal headphone uh, CD players and stuff it's the first time I wasn't gonna be able to mix like I like to you know with you know the, you know pitch bin and all that stuff and you know and I just got the two little CD players and I bought a cheap mixer Bought some car speakers, a nice amp. Start DJing again. People didn't even notice that. Brother had a eighty-five dollar amplifier from uh, Sears. I think I got it from Sears. And two Radio Shack CD players and a Radio Shack mixer. Charging twelve fifty. I burned the mixed CDs down on the computer and put one in each CD player and play the songs out. You make me cheap. I remember one time a friend of mine asked me to build something for him. And all we had was a pile of wood and a bunch of Tarps, handful of screws, two staple guns. I 
that make me cheap? I remember one time I was on vacation and I swear before we went on vacation I bought a pair of glasses I think they cost like 15, 20 bucks put them in my pocket and sat down and broke them a pair of shades $20 pair of shades I see people out there laughing like $20 for a pair of shades hey you're lucky they didn't break putting them on your face but I wasn't stupid a lot of people are dumb, and back in those days, they were paying like $45 and $50 for some Ray-Bans and all that. You know what, I'm just walking around. I am not paying $45 for something. I'm going to drop off my head and break, or we go to an amusement park, and they fly off my head, and I feel stupid for a pair of damn Ray-Bans. So I was, I was thrifty. So we're in the Mexican Riviera. And my nephew, he's got these glasses on, and he's walking, and, you know, and my, my niece is walking with him, and my, my wife is over there. And we walked into a jewelry store, and I swear this brother's like six, eight, what, six, seven, six, eight, you know, and it Kobe, Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant, they thought he was Kobe. I'm like, oh, my God, they're flocking him. This fool, Kobe Bryant. And they thought my wife was some singer, too. Walked up to me, asked me, what do you do? Well, I'm a musician. They left me standing right there. He just walked away. He said, like, go to the singer and the basketball player. The musician? Nothing. So later on that day, I was disgusted. My eyeballs was burning, and I'm on the beach. I got no attention Except for in the one little village we were in, and uh, it was a uh, not Mazatlan, it was the one star with A. I forget the name of it. Acapulco. I'm sweating profusely. It was humid, so hot in Acapulco. They thought I was gonna die. Sir, senor, senor, water. I'm like, no water, no water. Just napkins, towels. They was giving me shit for sale. Wipe my head. They thought I was gonna die. They didn't want me to die in their village. Just like, pat this fool's forehead, fan his ass, get him the hell up out of here. We ain't taking no casualties today. It was the first boat they had in like um, maybe like a week. The weather was bad or something, so they really needed the sails, and I looked like I was dying. That's another story. So, all I want is my Xbox name. So, look, when you go to different countries and everything, and you enjoy yourself in these countries, you cannot be stupid. We went and saw the people, the fire divers. I've completely lost track. What the hell? This is what Alzheimer's do to your ass. Smoking too much weed, probably. Stress. Drama. Wish I could rewind this and then keep talking to you, but I guess I'll go ahead and do this episode of 40 Minutes. And then, if I don't get back on track, if you write it down on the bottom, I will dedicate the rest of the, the, the reply. I'll do a reply video. I will dedicate it to you for getting me back on track. Once I went to Mexico, man, I mean, Mexico is one beautiful place, man. I would, lo I, lo I would love to live in Hawaii or get me a nice spread in Mexico. Big old giant place. Let's talk about immigration. Well, whatever. When you old like me, you lose track. And people say, well, you're only 44. Why, why are you losing your mind? You're at 44. You know, I've met people younger than me who take pills for their memory. There's one guy who has to write notes everywhere he goes. I don't even know where the hell I'm going with this. So I'm not even going to do an episode of 40 Minutes this week. I will go ahead and break it down. Oh, you know what? I do want to talk about one thing. When people put trust in other people, you have to understand that when you trust people, it's based on several different intangibles. I can't treat Billy like I treat Robert 
like I treat Mary, like I treat Cheryl, like I treat, you know, Charlene, like I treat Jesse, like I treat AJ, like, you know, treat, Bill, you know, Robert, you know, you go and everybody is treated different. Every single person out there is pretty much a Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson, they say, dealt with some of the greatest basketball minds, you know, Dennis Rodman, you know, uh, Michael Jordan, Scotty pimped out, and, you know, uh, uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, you know, Lamar Odom, and, uh, you know, Derek Fisher, and, uh, um, uh, what's the guy's name? Um, Big Bob, Robert Rory, you know, Shaquille the Wheels, and, um, you know, uh, Nick Van Exel, and so on and so forth. And, you know, these great basketball players and all these different attitudes, and, you know, people deal with different attitudes. We as regular people, we deal with different attitudes every day. And we don't get credit for that. Um, so I'm agoraphobic. I don't go outside anymore. I got my connect going on. I want to get my... I need to get my gamer tag intact. And I want, I want to save all that I started. Just like this YouTube thing. You know, I can't put you in position and then, you know, just bail out on the people who actually do watch this stuff. Because like I said, you know, somebody told me a long time, you go ahead and you, you talk and you get your problems out. And we deal with racism. We deal with sexism. We deal with classism. We deal with all this stuff. And everything I've ever dealt with, I go from one spectrum to the other. If a lot of people want to blame Jewish people for their problems, then let's look into it. If you're going to say a group of people are cheap and frugal or whatever, why is their cheapness affecting you? Why is their frugality or frugalogity or whatever affecting you? It doesn't. So we can hate on this person or that person. And should I do the Alonzo Witch character next season? Should I do the Al Hitler? You know, because whenever I get hate, it'll be either Hitler. Alonzowitz, X, or so on and so forth. These different characters are derivative or derived of or spawned from or come from or began as or a part of a whole different thing. These things in which I'm calling different are others' emotions. I may say something that will offend one white person and I'll make another white person stand up and say something. I may say something that will offend a black man and have this black man call me Uncle Tom. I will defend a black woman when she's done the dumbest shit possible and have a bunch of people say, why are you defending this little girl? It's because everybody has a perspective. And if you can look at everything from everybody else's direction instead of the direction in which you're walking in, you might not actually step in the shit you may not actually shit but avoid the shit totally what I mean by you may not step in the shit or actually shit is this we may say some things that stir up some shit but if you backtrack you just step in the shit in which you stirred up and if you don't stir up any shit in the first place there will not be any backlash get it and people don't understand like I mentioned before I had a group of followers that look like this I talked about a man talking about a girl's kiss they flipped back because they wouldn't back me because of him then I talked about him and then his next of kin they didn't understand that because my rhymes are unique I make a freak want to freak and a freak want to speak and a freak want to speak, when a freak want to speak, when a freak speaks, a freak can get freaked. But you don't understand what a freak when a freak speaks. But you can't see what a freak when a freak speaks. And if a freak speaks about a freak, this freak is spoke. Spoke about a freak may not be a joke. Words have replaced with the word freak as I speak. Do you want a freak? Understand what a freak may be. A minister society, 
someone falling in love with something that is other than reality. Freak of nature. Please. As deep as the rivers may run, a submarine goes to the depths of the ocean. Some subs will never touch the bottom. The biggest ones can't. There's depths that are so deep that those mere men like me and you may never reach. They can only send a robot and the robots might not make it back. One time pictures from the bottom of an abyss that no one can understand. How can things survive in depths so low and temperatures so cold? Is it the will of creation, the will of man, or life itself that make us continue to want to be other and better? And yes, by all means, I want to maintain my gamer tag. It may not mean anything to anyone else. But for a 44-year-old man who's played in like 30 Super Bowls, who can boast and say, yes, I've been playing Madden since 06. I have been playing Madden since before that. I have been playing Madden since cartridges in the machine. I have been saving stats since they allowed me. These statistics don't show you exactly what I've accomplished, but they remind me of all those games I played, all those miserable hours sitting in front of the Madden, waiting for people to call me back after interviews, waiting in front of Madden. They'll call, they'll call. Franchise mode, season one, year one. Super Bowl. Franchise mode, year 16. <laughs> Super Bowl. Next game. 2007. Playoffs. Playoffs, my brother comes over. You ought to go for it. Tom Brady's been on my ass all game long. You ought to go for it. Thinking of a couple years earlier on the Nintendo, sitting in the living room, playoffs. Let me take the other controller, he says. Playoffs. Oh, first game he'd ever won. Playoffs. Tom Brady's on me. I can kick this field goal. I am the Raiders. Minute and 23 seconds left. Tom Brady has been on me all game long. I can let the clock run. I've been inching down the field. I get another first down. You go for it, man. No. I want to let the clock run down. Tom Brady has been on me all game long. I go in, score. They can't win it. Seven is not enough. Field goal, they'll need seven. I got this. Tom Brady's been on me all game long. You ought to just go for it. I'm going to kick the field goal. Just go for it. Don't get it. Forty-three seconds left. I have won several Super Bowls. The greatest, though, was the first time I've ever tried to use two teams 
in a season. Yeah, I did it. This is the first time I didn't actually play the game. I got the Raiders to the Super Bowl and the Niners. I didn't play every Niner game, and I wasn't going to let them lose. My goal was to see the Bay Area in the Super Bowl. Greatest ever. Thirty-seven, fourteen, Oakland. Madden, two thousand nine. Dad, hell of a year. Then there's the one year I couldn't get a Madden. Yes, the year with no Madden. 2007, that was a tough one. I don't even want to go there. Let's, 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 let's move on. Let's just let's move on. So um, I need my gamer tag, man. And it's new... As a, a, a old school gamer, man, um, you know, I go back before Coleco Vision. I go back when the only gaming systems were handheld. You feel me? Keep your hands back. But you get it? That's what I'm saying. That's how far I go back. And when I first got on the internet, the very first internet experience, social network thing was the Xbox. Couldn't use my other name, Lonzo Lover. Lover for real. My wife didn't want to hear that shit anyway. Lonzo, what? For real? For real? So, you know, I you know tried to do an AIX a long time ago, so I'm like, you know, let me see what AIX is about. And AIX was taken. So... That's where the real AIX came from. It came from Xbox 360. AIX itself came from a dream. Broke Man Studio also came from a dream. But the real AIX came from Xbox 360. And they will not let me have my gamer tag. Because I can't remember some old... 19 something hotmail address. Lame, isn't it? It's like if this page right here was to be gone. It could be here with nothing on it and you would still remember me. I unplugged my phone up. It's about to die. How can I help you? Be quick. The phone's about to die. What's up? What's up? You getting ready for game time? Let's hope for somewhere in the middle. Let's hope for 1365. Well, I'm going to push for 1365. I don't, want, I don't want to get your hopes up too high because 11 is where you don't want to be, so let's push for at least, okay, 15. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, see, then that would make it, that would make it to 15. Well, 15, that would make it like 13. So, yeah, okay. We're on the same page. So, look, um, some people came... Yeah, some people came through last night, right? So, um, you want me to get the chicken wings or you still just want to do a burrito? All right. All right. So, let me finish this video up, okay? All right. I'll call you back. All right. See, so you got you got the house phone, right? Okay, the number is 347-444-5444. 
blah, blah, you people, you people out there on the internet thought I was going to give it to them. Look, you should have seen them. Oh, wait. Okay, I'll call you back. Bye. I'm going to tell you guys a joke real quick. The guy goes to a store and he tells the guy, I just uh, bought some bubble gum down the street and I need more pack of gum. I dropped my gum down the street. Yes. Okay, that'll be $1.65. Is it last, uh, you got dollar pack like down the street. I want one dollar pack. Yes, dollar pack. Yes, the best gum come one dollar. I like that flavor. One dollar pack. Yes, one dollar pack, you know. Okay. okay. I'll find you a one dollar pack of gum, the guy says. The guy says, like, first time in this country. I love it. Black president, black people everywhere work. Black, 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 black. You know, this is a guy. He's a black guy. Never seen so many black people in his life working. Black country. He thinks America's a black country. He says, you know, you got America black. First time men, black men on money. American, I love it. And the guy says, there's, there's no black man on money here in America. He says, yes, it is. Oh, it isn't. Yes, it is. Apparently somebody gave the motherfucker chain <laughs> for a ten with one of these. <laughs> well, it is funny that Americans would try to do another, uh, you know, person like that. You know, that's, that's, and they got away with it. That's pretty funny, but um. It would have been even more funny if they had a guy with asked one of these. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people um, expect me to do a political video this year. And I told you people, I'm running for president. You vote for me. The least can happen is I won't be the last guy. And you won't be voting for a millionaire. But why would you vote for a broke black man? who ain't combed his hair in three days, who wants to drink a beer, but just don't feel like going to the store and get one. Hmm? I thought it was funny though, when I heard the joke. But when I heard the joke, the guy got changed for $100 and got paid in Obama bucks. And, um, it was a joke about foreigners coming to this country and getting got by regular Americans. And when you joke about somebody being, you know, taken advantage of, it's not funny. And when things are done in poor taste, they're meant to be done in poor taste for a reason. To make people think, I screwed you guys out of one minute and I had to make it up with something that was completely shocking and senseless that you'd understand that this guy is full of shit. But you didn't believe it. But it could happen. You could be some foreigner on vacation in some strange country. And someone could say, yes, I give you change. I give you change for a tin. You have spent one dollar and I have change. And your change is, uh, your change is uh, nine dollars. And then you'd be like, okay, because you don't know. This episode of 40 Minutes made no sense to me. The bottom line is, I'm just crying and bitching because I can't take my name, the real AIX, and place it on my very brand new Xbox and jump around in the neighborhood, in the, or neighborhood, in the living room, 
and lose weight with the biggest weight loser. Get the IFC <laughs> workout. Go to Disneyland Adventures. I saw some horror stuff. It's called The Beginning of Horror. They got all kinds of games for the Connect now for old people like me. I told you folks I want to go back and live the glory days of when I played Pop Warner football. Benched in high school. Fucking bastards. Classes. Bastards. Okay, I wasn't from the neighborhood. <sighs> okay, look. This episode of 40 Minutes was about nothing. The fact of when you spend money by like Xbox Live or, you know, Microsoft Live, you give these people your credit card numbers and all of a sudden you believe that you've built up some accomplishments because they tell you they got all your achievements right there. Your Xboxes break down, but they'll only fix them X amount of times. That's not the point. Fact of the matter is, you made me make a name for myself on your system. Then you made me upgrade my system until I could not upgrade my system anymore. And then when I finally upgrade my system, I can't take my name with it. I can't enjoy the, the benefits of my NBA titles. You know what I'm saying? I bought games like Burnout and all these downloads. You pay for them and you buy them. I can't transfer them to the new machine with a bigger hard drive. What about all the waste is created? What about all the lost gamer tags? What about these people whose so-called existence is based on how many games they win or lose? in the realm of the internet. I can't make it to the tournament if I can't use my name. What about all that? What about loyalty to the gamer? And I don't think I should do the Jew show. It's That's in poor taste. You see, I'd have to cut my hair and wear a yarmulke. But I told him I would not wear a real yarmulke because that's disrespectful. It's a religious artifact. They use it within when they pray and everything. You don't do that. But he did say we can go with the little fake beanie cap. We'll cut the beanie off and make it look like a yarmulke. I said well, maybe we should go with those little coasters. We get the fake Jamaican coasters. I'll cut my hair bald. We'll put the little coaster on my head. But for locks, I wanted to get like two dreadlocks off one of those old, uh, what's that, uh, Johnny Depp, Dead Man Chest, uh, you know, Captain Jack Sparrow wigs and stuff. I take two dreadlocks off and just tape them to the side of my head. I had the two locks going down. You get it? It would have been so funny for me to walk into a store and haggle my price because I'm supposed to be that cheap. But I wasn't cheap when I spent my time buying all those Xbox games, playing all those hours on all those games. I wasn't being cheap when I had the Xbox magazine for all those years. I wasn't being cheap when I paid eight to, was it seven fifty a month to be able to play video games online. When everybody was like, buy a PlayStation, it's free. Now, do you see where I'm going? Took me almost a damn hour, but hey, this episode of 40 Minutes. Oh shit, it's basketball night. Uh, 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 uh -huh. Hello? Yes, sir. Same thing. Same thing. Go ahead and call it Dream Queen. All right. All right. Thanks. You get the picture. I want my gamer tag because I spent money on those games, and there's a history of it right there on the machine. 
every download that I paid for. You can't read. Get, you, we can't, you can't download them to your machine, your new one. They won't let you cancel the old uh, email addresses and all that stuff. It's ridiculous. In other words, maybe I should have uh, kept up on that a long time ago. Maybe I should have never updated my old Xbox before I get this new one because I could have, yeah, whatever. Whatever the case may be, is I've talked your ear off long enough. This episode of 40 Minutes has gone 50 minutes, so the next time I'm only giving you 30 minutes. I'm pulling the tube out this year. I should not do the Jewish character. Everybody's telling me to do the Jewish character. I need your opinion. Do the Jewish character because I'm supposed to be that cheap, and I don't know a person being cheap and, and being uh, Jewish. I don't. I can't see the whole thing, but these people are telling me every time I go shopping, they should come with me and film. These are my friends. They should film me when I go doing my bargain hunting for my computers and everything because I build, I rebuild everything. I completely recycle everything I use, so I don't know. I, I don't know. What, what do you think? Do I do the cheap character who happens to have a Jewish name? What was it? Alonzowitz? Alonzo Jawinski, Alonzo Witz Jawinski, some stupid shit that it was just a bad, it was a bad, it was a bad idea, but I think it'd be funny. But if you think it's funny, tell me it'll be funny. If not, yeah, I won't do it. But if not, you know, tell me anyway. But just uh, give me your opinion. If you watch this whole video, I love you. Thank you. I'm pulling the tube out in, in 2013. See you soon. Whatever. Blah blah blah. Yakety yakety. I'm out of here. Oh yeah, like I said. This topic I'm worrying, uh, working on is the one for the next year. The last four years, I did black, I did Mexican, and I did white, and I did drama. So, this is it, number five. What do we do?